plans call for three 30 second inch sheeting, which is almost exactly two and a half millimeter. I'm going to use two millimeter, which is just slightly bigger than one sixteenth of an inch. Now I think one reason why the plans call for the three thirty second is the bay here, here, and here. These are about three and a half inch wide bays. And then the rest of the bays out are about three inches, which is pretty standard for models. The, uh, if you use one uh, sixteenth, or in my case, two mm, then there might be a little bit of a tendency to sag between the ribs on the three and a half inch bays. But the three inch base, it's not quite as bad. It's a little bit, a little bit stiffer, if you will. A three thirty second or two, in this case, two and a half mm is certainly much stiffer. I mean, you get a whole lot more support there between these wider ribs, but I, I weighed them out. I weighed, uh, six pieces, which, Six pieces is enough to do the top. Six more pieces on the bottom. Two and a half mm, which is about three thirty seconds. Six pieces came up to 165 grams. Six pieces of two mm, a little bit thicker than one sixteenth, is 94 grams. So you're adding a, a, an additional well, total would be 70, but again, some of that's excess. Um, and it's, let's say 70 grams on the top, 70 grams on the bottom, 140 grams. I mean, now you're talking like an extra five ounces uh, in sheeting alone. So I'm going to go with the 2mm. First, I'm going to talk about my sheeting layout. Now remember, I mean, this whole wing has been joined now. It, it's just the top. The bottom hasn't been done yet, but the top. But the wing is basically one piece right now. So I thought another way to add some strength in addition to that would be to run the sheeting one piece across the middle of the wing. Something uh, like this is what I have in mind. And then... For the rest of the wing, the front will be just a single piece out to the edge, both sides, a butt joint in the middle, and then a piece here to the end, cut in half with the other piece here, same on the other side, and that gives me the six sheets. That gives me strength in the middle of the wing, right about the, the heart of the wing, if you will. This is what I have so far. It's about halfway on the spar on each side. Up to the front. And then just off the back of the trailing edge. This will get filled in with scrap right here.
filling in some of the cracks in the joint with sanding dust prior to adding CA. Alright, it's an awful big piece of sheeting. Let's see how it fits. It's just like the center line joint here. Alright. This seems pretty nice. Everything is covered except for this last little bit right here. And I'll just fill that in with some scrap. All right, it feels like it lays pretty well. Now what I need to do, I've already added some fillers, a few low spots here. I need to just come along and sand this whole thing. Try to get it as smooth and as level as possible. I'm using 60 grit sandpaper here to try to remove as much of the glue joint as quickly as possible while removing as little of the balsa as possible. Almost ready to start sheeting. I went back and I needed to add some supports to the wing. It's just really a little too flexible the way it is with these carbon fiber rods. So I added some supports along the trailing edge and then again along the um, I guess the middle part of the wing but that really that really provides a lot more support because when you're sheeting you typically you know add a little bit of pressure there are many different ways to sheet a wing one of my favorites is the iron-on sheeting method now normally when I use the iron-on sheeting method I use tight bond but I've run out of tight bond so I'm going to use some Mod Podge and I think it'll work. I've used it for other things as an iron-on uh, type glue, heat activated iron-on glue. I don't know if it's actually heat activated, like a heat activated glue, but I know it kind of works that way. Uh, so the iron-on sheeting method is really pretty simple and, and probably the best reason why I like it is because you can really take your time. You don't have to rush like you, you do with CA. Uh, basically what you do, if you don't know about it, you, you brush on glue onto all the surfaces that are gonna be uh, glued up. Get a nice, uh, I don't wanna say thick, but you know, a good, uh, a good helping of glue because once the glue is on, then you're going to come back and you're going to lay your sheeting on top of the glue to transfer some of the glue to the sheeting. Then you're going to remove your sheeting and any dry spots on the sheeting get a little more glue. Then you wait till everything dries. And this is the great part about it. You just, it's got to dry so you can really take your time. Then you come back with an iron. So for now, let's go ahead and just get the glue on. I've got the Mod Podge in a little squeeze bottle. All right, the base glue is down. Now let's put the sheeting on top of it. Now we're just gonna transfer some of that glue to the sheeting. Let me peel the sheeting back off. Now you see we have transferred the glue to the sheeting. Now, we just kinda look for dry spots. I typically just use my finger to run over. I don't really have a whole lot of room here, just to run over the Everything kind of spread glue out, looking for any dry spots. Remember at this point, we can just take our time because 
the glue has to dry before we can go to the next step. All right, that's pretty well spread out on the sheeting. Now, we just make sure that everything on the wing part is, is uh, smoothed out. <coughs> and here's a good opportunity to take little glue blobs that may have gone down the sides of the ribs or something, and you can take them and scoop them up and apply to dry areas. That way you don't have a lot of excess glue blobs that are just adding weight. For the little pesky glue blobs, just a brush dipped in some water. I've got my iron on. I'm just gonna use regular covering iron for this. Right now I've got the heat set on high. That's usually too much heat. I usually have to turn it down, but that's where I start. So I kind of have an idea of where I am starting. Long story short, the Mod Podge is a bust for the iron-on sheeting. It works well for applying fabric to wood surfaces, but no matter what I tried, I could not get the Mod Podge to stick the sheeting down well. I tried on a second coat of the glue. I set the heat as high as I could get it to the point of scorching the balsa, but nothing seemed to work. So I guess I'll have to give up on the idea of using Mod Podge and revert back to tight bond. I'm not happy with the way the Mod Podge did the iron on sheeting method. Definitely not as good as tight bond. You can rub your hand over the sheeting and you hear that crinkle sound, that's kind of where the glue joints are, are popping off and coming back together, I guess you'd say. So, what I'm going to do now is remove it from the jig, try to flip it upside down without peeling the sheeting off, and then going back over all the joints with some CA. So I'm going to unscrew the blocks. Place some weights on the spar all along the wing to keep the top flat. Now I'm just going to go over all the joints with some thin CA. Fortunately, I was able to recover the sheeting with the CA. It's holding pretty well now. I'm happy with this. In part B, we make some cradle blocks and sheet the bottom of the wing. 